to introduce yourself and the name of the media you're working for before uh, you take the floor. Christian. Christian Spielmann de l'AFP, Monsieur Timmermans, Madame Mogherini, vous venez de dire qu'il faut passer des paroles aux actes. Le gouvernement britannique vient de répondre à votre projet en lui opposant une fin de non recevoir. Madame Theresa May, ce matin, vient de dire que les migrants qui traversent la Méditerranée doivent être impitoyablement refoulés, renvoyés chez eux. Je voudrais savoir quelle est votre réponse à cette prise de position. Est-ce que c'est ça que vous appelez le populisme Ma deuxième question, vous parlez beaucoup des quotas, c'est la grande innovation de ce plan. Je voudrais savoir... Où est la solidarité quand un plan s'applique à 25 des 28 États membres parce que trois d'entre eux ont des opt-out Est-ce que c'est ça la solidarité partagée Est-ce que c'est ça répartir les, les, les réfugiés dans toute l'Union européenne et exempter certains Merci. I will take the first part of the question and let me uh, do it in English as you referred to uh, an article and a position that was, was written in English. Um, je suis What I referred to uh, in my uh, briefing to the UN Security Council was the reference uh, to the Geneva Convention, uh, which is, I think, something we all adhere to and respect, uh, which is the basic principle of non refoulement, which is a principle that is uh, uh, at the core of the European uh, Union action. Uh, so it is very clear that uh, uh, we will not and we do not intend uh, to uh, contradict uh, our uh, respect Uh, of the Geneva Conventions, uh, and that uh, uh, is uh, uh, not only my personal position, but our common position. Uh, I believe that there has been uh, a little bit of misinterpretation. I don't know if intentional or not. I guess not. Uh, obviously, uh, as uh, Vice President Timmermans uh, uh, specified, uh, this doesn't mean that everybody will come to Europe or will be allowed to come to Europe, but for sure, all peoples that uh, we can save at sea uh, will not uh, be sent back, uh, in particular not sent back to places that are not safe, before they are identified and their case is, is, uh, uh, is um, proceeded. Uh, this is a basic principle of international conventions and the credibility of the European Union in particular in promoting human rights, human rights protection uh, abroad, uh, is also based on our capacity to protect and promote human rights inside the European Union. Can I, can I just add a few words? Because I think it's an important issue and, and we should get things clear, both on uh, what our obligations are and our intentions are. I think part of the f uh, reason why Many of our citizens don't trust our asylum policy is because we have been very, very limited in our success to actually take people back who do not have the right to asylum. So if the issue here is that people who, after assessing, who have a right to be assessed, turn out not to have the right to asylum, that they should be sent back as swiftly as possible, we do agree. That is why the Commission is proposing to have support to frontline member states to be able to process uh, asylum seekers very quickly, take their fingerprints, uh, check their stories, etc., so that indeed, if they don't have a right to asylum, they can be sent back. That is why uh, the High Representative uh, and uh, uh, Dimitris uh, Avramopoulos are also intensifying their contacts with other countries so that countries who should take back people actually do something because there is a problem with that as well. So in that sense, uh, return is an integral part of our plan, an integral part. It's a cornerstone of the plan. So in that sense, I think uh, Theresa May can, be, can rest assured. On uh, the uh, emergency plan, listen, the emergency plan is based on the treaty, uh, Article uh, 78.3 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union. In that treaty, three member states have a special uh, a position. The Brits and the Irish can opt in if they want or opt out if they want, and the Danes don't have to participate. We can talk at length about whether this is a, a good thing or a bad thing. This is the treaty situation, and the Commission has to deal with the treaty as it is, and it is up to the United Kingdom and Ireland to decide whether they want to be part of this or not, and they have the right not to be part of it. It's up to them. Okay, thank you. Giovanna? 
Giovanna Pancari, Sky Italia. Uh, first, a question for the high representative. Uh, if you can tell us uh, when do you hope the CSDP mission could be on place, uh, talking about timing. And for Commission Avramopoulos, uh, we don't see yet quotas on relocation because you say to us they're going to be in the proposal you're going to present end of May. But uh, what's about the resettlements? Uh, do you have uh, any ideas or about how they will be distributed between the different member states that accept of course, to welcome uh, these migrants or not. Thank you. I start. Um, thank you for the question. As I said, uh, I expect the foreign ministers and the defense ministers to uh, take the first decision on the uh, CSDP operation on Monday, uh, so in a few days from now. Uh, this would uh, mean indicating uh, the headquarters, the commander, uh, and the further planning for the operation. Uh, this could make it possible uh, for uh, the June European Council to take uh, the decision of launching the operation. I would also hope that in the meantime, after we have taken, or while we are taking, the first decisions in this respect, which means already on Monday, uh, the UN Security Council uh, could uh, draft and adopt uh, a resolution that I would like to explain very clearly, uh, would make it possible for our operation uh, to uh, have a series of uh, uh, interventions and uh, operations uh, more complete, uh, but this would not uh, uh, limit uh, our willingness to go on, uh, because there are issues like uh, uh, getting and sharing information, intelligence, data, and cooperation with the uh, uh, authorities of the countries involved uh, that can be done even before a resolution is adopted. But I think, I hope, uh, that the Security Council uh, will do in the meantime, between our decision on Monday and the final launch of the operation, will take uh, the appropriate decisions on a UN Security Council resolution. Um, let me start by uh, defining uh, the two terms, because uh, I have noticed reading the newspapers that there is a confusion between uh, relocation and uh, resettlement. Even yesterday, I saw it in the newspaper. Well, relocation is um, the transfer between member states of persons in clear uh, need for um, international protection. Uh, resettlement uh, means the transfer of uh, the individual displaced uh, persons in clear need also of international protection uh, on submission of the UNCHR and in agreement with the country of uh, resettlement. It is a precondition the country to agree on that. From a third, from a third country, to a member state. So, as uh, far as the substance of the question is concerned, concerned um, allow me, since the question was in Italian, to do it in, in Greek. So, use your earphones because I understand it's a difficult language for you, but I have been criticized many times in Greece that I speak only English here, and I'm a politician. Lipon, you already say, met in ενεργοποίηση της οδηγίας για την παροχή προσωρινής προστασίας, δεν θα υπάρχει η πρόταση για ένα ε, ε, συντελεστή κατανομής, το που λέμε distribution key. Ο συντελεστής βασίζεται σε αντικειμενικά, όπως είπα και στην εισαγωγή μου, μετρήσιμα και κυρίως ε, επαληθεύσιμα κριτήρια. Το πληθυσμό. Ο συνολικός πληθυσμός όπως ήταν και έχει καταγραφεί από τις σχεστικές έρευνες την 1η Ιανουαρίου του 2014. Επίσης, το συνολικό ακαθάριστο προϊόν, το GDP, όχι το κατακεφαλή όπως κάποιοι έγραψαν και του έτους του 2013, σύμφωνα βέβαια πάντοτε με τα τελευταία διαθέσιμα στοιχεία. Επίσης, ένα άλλος παράγοντας είναι ο αριθμός των αιτήσεων για τη χορήγηση ε, ασύλου. Ο μέσος όρος των αιτήσεων παροχής ασύλου ανά ένα εκατομμύριο κατοίκους κατά την περίοδο 2010 μέχρι τον προηγούμενο χρόνο, δηλαδή το 2014. Επίσης, ένας τέτοιος παράγοντας είναι η ανεργία. 
Υπάρχουν χώρε που έχουν υψηλό δίκτυο ανεργία. Υπάρχουν άλλε, οι οποίε ευτυχώ για αυτέ ο δείκτη είναι χαμηλότερο. Ο συνολικό δείκτη ανεργία το κατά περίπτωση κράτο μέλο το 2014. Οι παράγοντα λοιπόν που λαμβάνονται υπόψη είναι ξεκάθαροι και οι πληροφορίε δεν δίνονται αυθαίρετα, προέρχονται από την Eurostat. Δεν υπάρχει λοιπόν περιθώριο ερμηνεία ε, των ε, ε, κριτηρίων. Τώρα, τελειώνω λέγοντα ότι σε σχέση με την βαρύτητα του, τα δύο κύρια κριτήρια, δηλαδή ο πληθυσμό και το GDP, το ΑΕΠ, σχετίζονται άμεσα με την δυνατότητα απορρόφησης των, των μεταναστών. Τα δύο άλλα κριτήρια, προηγούμενες δηλαδή προσπάθειες που κατέβαλαν πολλά κράτη-μέλη για να περιθάλψουν όσους ζητούσαν άσυλο και οι δείκτες ανεργίες, χρησιμοποιούνται μονάχα, θα λέγαμε, ως ε, διορθωτικοί παράγοντες στην προκειμένη περίπτωση. Okay, thank you. Mark. Afternoon, Mark Babelkorn, Fullscom here. Two questions for uh, Vice President Timmermans. Um, it's about the permanent relocation uh, proposal. It's, it, the press release says something about when, a, when there is a mass influx. Can, could you put a number on this? You know, what is a mass in, influx? And the second question, more political, was there any discussion within the Commission about the fact that this permanent relocation scheme should is a uh, supposed to be mandatory and automatically triggered. Thanks. Well, on, on your first question, um, I would like to refer uh, for more detail to Commissioner Avramopoulos, but in general terms, I have to tell you, uh, there uh, is, uh, uh, we are uh, devising a, a system uh, in an emergency situation, and if it turns out to be uh, an interesting uh, template uh, in general, it can be also applied uh, uh, permanently, but we are now devising it. In terms of the numbers, this is something the Commission is still uh, uh, working on because we have to take into account a uh, very quickly changing situation and we have to take in the, the latest data to be sure that we, we get it uh, right. On your second question, you know, we have worked very intensively uh, in the new uh, way of working of this, of this Commission. Uh, for, for weeks on, on the issue. And from different sides, we've had very, very valuable uh, contributions. But we were united. The whole commission, the whole college was united on the fact that if you really want to act upon a political declaration made by the European Council, you will have to come with real plans that have real meaning and have uh, uh, real consequences. And there was never any debate that this should be just a political uh, a declaration or uh, just a free-for-all plan. It was clear from the outset, and this was shared by every single member of the Commission, that we should be forceful about this and also put on the table proposals that would actually have concrete effects in the Member States. Vice President, who was very clear on, uh, on uh, this uh, answer. I would like to add just uh, one um, simple element. Um, the Commission will make its uh, legislative uh, proposal um, um, to, to submit, to propose an emergency uh, location plan based on Article 78 of the Treaty. Um, the Commission is currently developing its proposals that will be presented by the end of May. If I can add just one thing, because Franz referred uh, uh, to our new way of working. Uh, and I would just like to uh, stress the fact that uh, uh, many people were uh, at the beginning of, my, of our mandate uh, doing a lot of questions about uh, the two heads and the double role, council, commission. And let me say that I personally uh, very uh, well experienced in these uh, weeks and months on this uh, decision we've taken today and the interaction between Council, different Council formats, European Council and Commission, the added value uh, of playing this role at full. And the cooperation not only within the Commission, but so far, I stress so far, between the different formats of the Council and the European Council and the work we've done in the Commission uh, has proven to be extremely fruitful.
I expect this to continue, and I would personally, here I play a little bit uh, uh, the two roles, uh, personally uh, will commit myself to make sure that this uh, uh, will uh, happen. I think we have an added value in the very good intuition that President Juncker had in putting together all the elements, all the policies we have at the European level. Thank you. Thomas? Uh, Thomas Mayer vom Standard aus Österreich. Uh, ich, erlauben Sie, dass ich meine Frage auf Deutsch stelle uh, an den Vizepräsidenten Timmermans. Es ist eine sehr einfache Frage eigentlich und auch eine sehr konkrete. Wir haben ja in den vergangenen Tagen viel gehört über das Ende des Krieges. Uh, 70 Jahre ist das her und da wurde uns auch in Erinnerung gerufen, wie viele Millionen Menschen damals in Europa auf der Flucht war und Schutz gebraucht haben. Sie haben vorher, vorhin gesagt, dass die Kommission vorschlagen wird oder vorgeschlagen hat, dass in den nächsten zwei Jahren 20.000 Flüchtlinge insgesamt aus Drittländern in Europa aufgenommen werden sollen. Ich habe mir erlaubt, eine kleine Kalkulation zu machen, was das bedeutet. In dem Land, aus dem ich komme, würde das heißen, dass Österreich 360 Flüchtlinge zusätzlich in zwei Jahren aufnimmt. Ein Land von 8 Millionen Einwohnern. Auf Deutschland bezogen wären das bei 80 Millionen ein bisschen mehr als 3000 Flüchtlinge. Meine Frage an Sie ist, halten Sie das wirklich für einen mutigen Vorschlag, einen angemessenen Vorschlag angesichts der vielen Millionen Flüchtlinge in Syrien allein, die auf dem Weg sind? Und wäre es nicht eigentlich angemessener gewesen, die Kommission hätte gesagt, Europa soll 200.000 oder 300.000 Flüchtlinge aufnehmen? Dankeschön. Was wir tun, was wir jetzt zusätzlich tun, ist auch im Rahmen der UNHCR. Die arbeiten auf diese Art und Weise. Das gibt uns die Möglichkeit, Mitgliedstaaten Leute zu identifizieren vor Ort, die dann äh, Asyl bekommen können. Ich finde das ein wichtiger Schritt, dass wir das so machen und dass wir das auch jetzt verknüpfen zum ersten Mal mit den Gedanken, dass wir das auch mit einem Quotasystem machen könnten. Wenn das funktioniert und wenn es Vertrauen gibt, dass es so gut funktioniert, dann werden die Mitgliedstaaten bequemer mit äh, dieser Frage umgehen werden aber auch unsere Bürgerinnen und Bürger sehen, dass wir imstande sind, diese Politik vernünftig zu führen. Und dann, wenn es ein, eine Notlage gibt, dann hätten wir auch die Möglichkeit, das zu erweitern. Aber ich verweigere mich zu sagen, dass es nur ein kleiner Schritt ist. Es ist ein wichtiger Schritt vorwärts. Es ist wirklich eine wichtige Erneuerung, dass wir jetzt versuchen, die Solidarität, die immer so geäußert wird von allen Mitgliedstaaten, auch mit konkreten Vorschlägen zu unterbreiten. Thank you. Swedish television here. I'm wondering, uh, this system you have uh, on uh, proposing an EU-wide resettlement scheme, have you made any calculations on what that would mean for Sweden, who accepts a lot of refugees today? Commissioner? <laughs> Να επισημάνω κάτι. Κάθε χώρα έχει τα δικά της προβλήματα και τις δικές της ευαισθησίες. Η πολιτική όμως που υιοθετούμε σήμερα αφορά σε ολόκληρη την Ευρώπη και φέρνει, αν θέλετε, και τα κράτη-μέλη πρώτη της δικής τους ευθύνης να συμμετάσχουν για την υλοποίησή τους. Γι' αυτό πολύ σωστά πρωτήτερα ο κ. Στήμερος αναφέρθηκε στην ανάγκη να επιληχθεί αλληλεγγύη στην πράξη. Θα πω όμως και κάτι το οποίο είναι απόλυτα ειλικρινές. Είναι αλήθεια ότι η Σουηδία είναι μια πολύ ελκυστική χώρα για τους μετανάστες. Κάθε μορφής μετανάστη. Το βεβαίως δεν σημαίνει ότι και εμείς με την πολιτική που ασκούμε δεν φροντίζουμε ώστε να διαμορφωθεί ένα περιβάλλον ισότιμη συμμετοχής όλων των χωρών στο μοίρασμα αυτού του φορτίου και αυτής της υπευθυνότητας. 
Μην έχετε λοιπόν καμία αμφιβολία ότι η πολιτική μα βοηθάει και την Σουηδία όπω βοηθάει και όλε τι χώρε. Φτάνει, όπω είπα και στι ενακριτήριε παρατηρήσει μου, όλε οι χώρε να αντιληφθούν ότι πρέπει να επιμεριστούν ένα μέρο αυτή τη πολιτική, κυρίω στην εφαρμογή τη. Το τι έγινε μέχρι τώρα ανήκει στο χτε. Το γεγονό ότι από εδώ και πέρα μπαίνουν κανόνε στη μεταναστευτική πολιτική τη Ευρώπη, αυτό είναι αντιληπτό ότι βοηθάει τα κράτη-μέλη. Okay. Uh, James. Thanks, Natasha. James Cantor from International New York Times. Um, with regard to the strategy paper on tackling the issues uh, at source, as it were, particularly in Libya, can, um, uh, High Representative, can you in particular clarify whether that implies that there would be boots on the ground in Libya and whether there would be military action off the coast of North Africa? Just. Uh, just to clarify fi that point, because there's been a great deal of speculation about it ahead of Monday. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the question. Uh, I had a chance of clarifying that already in New York at the uh, UN Security Council. Uh, we are not uh, planning in any possible way a military intervention in Libya. This is not in any possible way uh, a way or an option for us. Uh, what we're planning is a naval operation. Uh, in coordination, hopefully, uh, uh, with uh, the Libyan authorities, with the relevant Libyan authorities, uh, but a naval operation to dismantle the business model uh, of the criminal organizations that are acting, uh, smuggling and trafficking people. Uh, so thanks for the question. It helps me to clarify this also uh, here in Brussels, as uh, I did uh, in New York just the day before yesterday. Thanks. Thank you, Ian. You've had your hand up for a while. Ian Trainer from The Guardian, following up on the question from the colleague, uh, High Representative. Um, that, does that mean that the, 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 the wording in your um, crisis management paper is, has been revised and it no longer applies because it does speak specifically of onshore or ashore operations perhaps being necessary and it does talk not only of naval and air assets, but of land assets and special forces. So has this basically been, been uh, omitted now fr uh, from, the, from the planning? And for Vice President Timmermans, um, the British government, of course, as you've referred to, has, not take, has, has said it will not take part in, in any of this uh, quota system or refugee burden sharing. But Theresa May, the Home Secretary, is effectively saying that your plans uh, will make the situation worse rather than better. Is that a criticism that you could respond to, please? And do you accept that criticism? Take the first part of the question. Uh, I'm happy to see that you can refer to uh, a document uh, that uh, uh, still has to be discussed by the ministers on Monday. Uh, and uh, noting the changes uh, in the narrative. Uh, I'm very happy, as I said, to play uh, my double role, uh, including uh, briefing here on aspects that are purely council related. As you know, uh, it is not in the Commission, uh, hence uh, our CSDP operations. Happy to do this, uh, but please keep in mind that this refers to a decision that uh, foreign and defence ministers will take uh, on Monday, and it is not referring to the agenda that the Commission is putting forward. That is, as uh, Commissioner Avramopoulos pointed out very well, a comprehensive set of uh, uh, actions and measures uh, that do not refer to that particular uh, decision that will be in the hands of the Council, so the Member States, on Monday. Uh, I was asked by your colleague uh, if uh, uh, our uh, operation means boots on the ground on Libya, and I answered clearly no. Uh, and I would answer again no. Uh, I said it's uh, going to be uh, if and when the ministers will take the decision. As I said, I hope this can, the first decision can be taken already on Monday, uh, a naval operation, uh, the extent of which I will present after taking the decision with the ministers on Monday. So I guess I'll see you there on the other side of the square. Thanks. I have the highest regard for British intelligence, but I'm not sure uh, Theresa May had already read uh, all the plans we've made, so I'll, I'll wait for the, for the judgment of the British government once they have had time to appraise our plans. But let me make a number of, of, of concrete remarks. First of all, what will make the situation worse 
is doing nothing, maintaining the present system, not envisaging steps forward, not following up on the minutes of silence in the European Council when the leaders of Europe said we need to do something. If we then do nothing, we'll make the situation worse for the people in trouble and we will lose credibility in the eyes of our citizens who have demanded that we do something about the tragedy in the Mediterranean. Secondly, if we do adopt these measures comprehensively, comprehensively, including better border control, including better cooperation uh, on the high seas between the agencies, including a faster and more efficient appraisal of asylum seekers, including an effective return policy, I wonder how anyone can maintain that this would make the situation worse. Okay, uh, Jurek. Jurek Kuchkevich, du journal Le Soir, question au vice-président Timmermans. Question politique générale qui est un petit peu dans le follow-up de, de ce que vous venez de dire. Euh, vous présentez un agenda qui est extrêmement ambitieux. Euh, donc il est impossible d'énumérer tous les points qui font problème, pas seulement au Royaume-Uni, mais à différents euh, autres euh, États membres. Des plans ambitieux de ce type-là, il y en a déjà eu, qui ont été successivement démolis euh, par les États membres. Est-ce que vous pourriez dire Qu'est-ce qui fait Qu'est-ce que vous pensez, votre commission aujourd'hui Qu'est-ce que vous avez comme instrument, comme moyen, comme détermination euh, qui, euh, qui permettrait que les choses se passent euh, différemment Peut-être pas sur l'ensemble du plan, mais quand même sur euh, une bonne partie, sur l'essentiel. Et une petite question subsidiaire qui est dans, dans le même ordre. La question, par exemple, point spécifique du règlement de Dublin 2, euh, dans votre communication, vous semblez être déjà beaucoup plus prudent que ce qu'on a entendu encore il y a quelques jours au sujet de la nécessité impérative de revoir euh, euh, Dublin 2. Premièrement, ce qui m'inspire... Euh, depuis le début de cette commission, c'est un président, Jean-Claude Juncker, qui a le courage de dire ce qu'il pense et de faire ce qu'il veut faire, même s'il si n'est pas sûr auparavant si c'est soutenu par euh, tous ses collègues au Conseil européen. Donc je crois que c'est euh, sous la présidence de Jean-Claude Juncker que cette commission prend des risques. Mais c'est ça la conséquence d'une commission politique. On n'est pas là pour euh, jardiner, on est là pour créer de nouvelles initiatives, on est là pour faire avancer l'Europe, on est là pour résoudre des problèmes épineux. Et on sait, dès le début, quand on fait des propositions dans ce domaine, il y aura des critiques. Il y aura des critiques. La Commission l'accepte parce qu'on ne peut pas accepter des familles entières qui meurent en Méditerranée. On ne peut pas l'accepter. Et de dire simplement, on va sauver ces gens, et puis, qu'est-ce qu'on fait avec ces gens On n'en parle pas, ce n'est pas mon problème. Ça ne résoudra rien du tout. Donc il faut une politique compréhensive qui s'adresse à les questions d'urgence, mais aussi aux problèmes de fond. C'est ça ce que fait la Commission. Sur votre deuxième question, sur Dublin 2, Dublin 2 a été créé dans une situation complètement différente. Donc il y a vraiment besoin de revoir Dublin 2. Il n'y a aucun, aucun doute euh, euh, sur ce point. Si on voit que, je crois que c'est, je, je cite le nombre maintenant, en, en, en 2014, 72% des euh, demandes d'asile ont eu lieu dans 5 des 28 États membres, c'est une situation intenable. Donc il faudrait vraiment revoir dans, sur ce point le système. Merci. Hello, yes, from Danish Television. Uh, Franz Timmermans, you are saying that you can't accept the status quo. So what will your message be to the people of Ireland, UK and Denmark? Is it acceptable that those three nations on forehand can decide not to be part of this new solidarity program? What we're saying is this. The treaty is a treaty. Article 78 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union stipulates clearly to whom this applies 
and stipulates clearly to one country to which it doesn't apply, which is Denmark, and two countries that have the option to uh, participate or not. It is up to the, those countries to decide whether they want to be part of the system of solidarity, yes or no. The Commission is guardian of the treaty, and we work with the treaty as it is. On the uh, wider issue, on the more fundamental issue, the long-term issue of uh, 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 resettlement, that's a different matter. There we could look into uh, ways of uh, incorporating 28 member states into the system. So that's the distinction we have. I have no issue with the fact that some member states have made arrangements that are covered by our treaty, and we will respect those arrangements. What they want to do politically is up to them. And I hope that um, we will see a great show of solidarity across the European Union. Okay, last question. It's like Sophie's choice. Okay, uh, Valentina, please. Yes, thank you, Natasha. Um, just on that, uh, Mr. Timmermans, where I was looking at the annex which um, lays out the resettlement numbers, and you do have um, Ireland, the UK, and Denmark in italics. So I was wondering, did you talk to the governments? Is there some sort of uh, feedback from them that they might take on some of these refugees. And secondly, if I may, to Ms. Mogherini, um, will this naval mission be able to rescue people at sea? Because if they will be closer to the Libyan borders than Triton, I suppose they would be the first ships on call. Thank you. Well, if you read uh, the paper, including all the annexes and, and footnotes, uh, you will see that we've simply uh, based ourselves on the legal situation. That's what the Commission does. We have not been talking to those member states uh, uh, beforehand uh, uh, because we want to treat every single member state equally. Uh, and we will see what would happen and we will see what the reaction will be from those member states. Okay. My part of the question. Uh, first of all, uh, as you know, the law of the sea uh, foresees that uh, uh, there is a, a an obligation to save lives uh, if uh, uh, there are people uh, in danger at sea. Uh, so this will also uh, obviously be uh, considered. Uh, this is also a natural part of life at sea. Uh, so that uh, obviously is going to happen. Uh, let me also say that uh, as we were foreseeing actually uh, during the college this morning, uh, I've seen that uh, a lot of attention has been uh, put on the two elements, on one side the naval operation, on the other side uh, the scheme, uh, the quota system. Uh, but uh, I think I can speak also on behalf of my colleagues uh, uh, when saying when we say this is a comprehensive approach, we really mean it. Uh, I understand that the headlines uh, might be focusing on some, uh, but all the rest that is in the package, all the rest that is in our work, all the rest that is even starting to be implemented in these hours, is as important uh, as the questions that most of you have raised on the critical, some of the critical elements. Uh, and as Franz was saying, uh, it's the whole set of measures altogether uh, that will make it possible, if possible, uh, to do some steps forward in saving lives and uh, uh, putting an end to these tragedies. Uh, please uh, do not focus only on three member states. Please don't focus only on the headlines uh, of uh, miles of water where the naval operation will act. Uh, please believe us when we say this is a true comprehensive package uh, and that is the intention uh, we have not only as a commission but I would say as the European Union taking responsibility comprehensively. Commissioner. Um, thank you. Before we, we close this meeting, I would like to let you know on um, what we intend to do as from now because today we entered a new stage, a new phase of this uh, process. On the 18th of May, there will be the presentation, as uh, Federica said before, in the uh, Foreign Affairs and Defence Ministers' Council. On the 19th of May, it will be the presentation in the General Affairs Council. On the 20th of May, it will be the presentation in the European Parliament. On June 16th, we are going to discuss it at the Home Affairs Council. And on June 26th, it will be the European Council. I would like just simply at the end to express our thanks for your contribution to our effort to kindly ask you to communicate this message in a strong way to the public opinion 
because whatever we try to do here has to do with how it will be perceived by the citizens of Europe. And you all understand that today Europe took the helm, took the lead, and we all together made a step forward in order to sort this problem out, not for the days to come, but for the years to come. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. This press conference will be immediately followed by a press conference of uh, Vice President Dombrovskis, Commissioner Tyson and Commissioner Moscovici. We will have a technical briefing at four on the content of the agenda. Thank you.